Right then, so you're a coke dealer looking for an awesome burner phone to use for meetups and re-ups. No, I'm kidding, although this would be perfect for that, but seriously, like everyone, you want a great phone that gives you as close to a premium flagship experience as you can without actually having to become a drug dealer to afford one, so this is a phone I'd strongly suggest you consider. No, you won't be getting a psychedelic colored glass back that'll shatter upon impact from a drop without a case and leave you sitting in a puddle of your own tears, but you will get a durable plastic unibody construction with a sexy feeling matte black finish. I'm not joking about that sexy feeling. Like if sexy had a feeling or texture, this. And I don't know what Google did with these buttons, but Jesus Murphy, are they satisfyingly clicky. Listen, oh. Oh, uh, the size is fantastic. Um, I've always preferred smaller phones and I'd still be using them if it weren't for the typing experience. Like the keyboards are just too narrow for me to get through an email or message efficiently. My wife says I have toe thumbs. I call them weapons. Uh, there's no notch or ping pong table size top bezel with all these crazy sensors for face unlock and gesture controls. So instead we get a familiar piece of hardware on the back and it works great. No worrying about angles or lighting and blah, blah, blah. It just bloody works, man. And it works really well. Uh, there's front and bottom stereo speakers. Yeah, they sound okay. Certainly not anywhere close to phones like the Pixel 4 XL or iPhone 11 Pro, for example, but it's clear and doesn't distort. More than good enough for listening to music in a pinch or watching YouTube vids while taking a dump. Now, I've completely switched over to and adopted the wireless life, but here we are in 2020 with a well-known phone from a well-known company that comes with a headphones jack. Have I used it? No. Will I use it? Probably not, but it's nice that it's there. I guess. A 5.8 inch 60 hertz OLED display is only 1080p, but the pixel density is high enough you'll go blind trying to hunt for them. Uh, image quality is good. There's still some pretty damn noticeable banding and image degradation while watching content with dark scenes, but other than that, colors and saturation look great. And even though it doesn't get as bright as I'd like while outside on a sunny day, which is just me nitpicking at this point, it's still plenty bright enough. Performance has been perfectly fine for me. Uh, the Snapdragon 730G and six gigs of RAM does sound pretty boring on paper. And a lot of reviewers said that they've noticed some hiccups here and there, as well as some frame drops or stuttering while gaming. I don't know, man. I personally haven't experienced any hiccups or hang time while launching or navigating through apps and gaming has been perfectly fine for me without any noticeable frame drops. That being said, I haven't played every single resource heavy game available, but here's the thing. First of all, it's not a flagship phone with the latest and greatest CPU and GPU and an ass ton of RAM. Second, most of these heavy games have graphic settings, so shut up, jump into the game's graphic settings, drop it down here, game on, and have fun. That's like complaining about how your $500 graphics card won't run as fast as your friend's $1,500 graphics card. You want better, you gotta pay to play, man. Anyways, now Android 11's out, at least for Pixel phones, and I gotta say, Android 11 on the 4A is pretty rad. Like, not to beat a dead horse, cause I know you've all heard every reviewer saying buying a Pixel phone is all about the software experience, but I mean, it's true. It's why I almost always go back to whatever the latest Pixel XL phone I've got is. Like I've always been a massive fan of how neutral Google's version of Android feels. It's just so simple, uncluttered and light feeling. I never use live caption, but I and everyone who owns a Pixel phone will all agree Call screening is just next level useful. Like depending on how many spam calls you get, pixels might be worth the purchase just for that feature alone. And then there's now playing, so I don't have to be embarrassed when I hear a banger playing at my friend's house and I have to ask his teenage son what song it is because I'm too old to keep up with all these goddamn new bands and solo artists these days. Now with Android 11, it's mostly behind the scenes quality of life stuff, but we do get some nifty new forward facing features like a new power menu with the ability to add shortcuts for all your smart home connected devices, which I've been using the hell out of, and native screen recording. But what would I use screen recording for, Jared? Well, there's tons of reasons, but me, I'd use it to show my friends and family how to use or set up their new phones without having to waste my time going to see them or God forbid, have them come over to my house. I'm sorry, family, I'm just joking, I love you. But I think one of, if not the best software feature is the camera processing. Slap Google's image processing on any phone and you've just doubled its value. That's a 100% true fact. It's not. But seriously, Google's camera software makes taking, at the very least, good quality photos stupid proof. Seriously, like as you all know, kids are pretty stupid. Hand the kid your Pixel phone and tell them to go take a picture of like the grass. 
It'll look great. You'll want to clean it with a wet wipe after because it'll be sticky as hell, but the photo will look great. Uh, I'm still seeing some room for improvement when it comes to portrait mode edge detection from the selfie cam in some cases, but most, most of the time, portrait selfies look really good. Night Sight is still just as redonkulous as it is on the more expensive Pixel 4 and 4XL. Sometimes you don't need it. The Pixel does a really good job with even just a bit of ambient lighting from the street, for example, but sometimes that Night Sight is the difference between garbage and good. And 4K video with stabilization enabled looks great too. Like it handles exposure transitioning pretty well. A couple of hiccups here and there, but still does really well. I'm not seeing or at least noticing any severe stuttering while panning or tilting and colors seem pretty natural. Basically, the photo taking capabilities are as good or better than most super expensive flagship phones, except you only get a single 12 megapixel standard wide angle lens on the back instead of some crazy triple quadruple lens hyperspace zoom macro Battery life is average at best. Like for most people these days, a 3140 milliamp hour battery ain't getting you to the next day. But it should get you through a full day, or at least it did for me. I mean, for the days where I was sitting at home testing its gaming and display performance, yeah, I'd be charging it by the evening, but with more or less normal usage, it got me through a day with about 15 to 20% left. And really, that's all I can ask from a phone this affordable. I think if you're a tech enthusiast, this probably ain't the phone for you, even if you're not into mobile gaming like me. Um, like the display and camera options alone that come with a premium device are enough to have me sticking with the OnePlus 8 Pro for now. But you know, if you like having nice things while at the same time don't need the extra performance or bells and whistles that come with a thousand plus dollar phone, this is an easy, easy full recommendation from me. Just gotta keep in mind, you don't get wireless charging, which isn't a hard one to get over, but no IP rating means no water resistance. So leaving it on the table while hammering back pitches at the bar and then leaving it poolside after while playing Marco Polo is a pretty terrible idea, which is kind of sad because that's one of my favorite things to do with my phones. Whew. Anyways, I think that'll do it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, maybe show me some love with that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and click that stupid bell icon too if you haven't already. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.